Hi, so first things first, I apologise for the fan noise, but I've got a blower going on this to get it to spin. Uh, and it was suggested to me as a method of getting a constant spin so I could have a look at some other bits and pieces. So I set up the blower, got this thing spinning, and basically spent the whole day messing around with coils. Because it is a lovely build, and I'm quite proud of it actually, and, and I want to do a nice job on the coils so that we get a decent amount of generation. Now my original intent, intent obviously was to use microwave oven transformers and I may well still do that. But there were lots of unanswered questions about it. Now I used the um, secondary in the microwave oven which is the thin wire with lots and lots of turns and it was a really simple decision. I mean the uh, voltage that you generate is dependent on the number of turns in a coil so more turns higher voltage. Now obviously that increases the resistance so you get lower ampage. But it was a random choice whether to use that or not, and I decided that it would be better if I had a look at all of that kind of stuff to try to decide whether I should use the primary, whether I should use the secondary, whether I should use both of them and connect them up. Now you might notice that I'm wearing gloves, and that's because in the original set I did use both of them when I got a couple of nasty shocks to put gloves on because I just got sick of getting zapped. Now, I took a microwave oven transformer, you probably see it right here, chopped off the top which is really easy to do actually because there just are a couple of weld lines here. You go down the weld lines with a grinder or a hacksaw and you'll get that section out. Now I also tried the microwave oven transformer with the whole block but actually it doesn't work very well at all. You need that open structure where the flux path isn't enclosed. If you enclose it you get a rubbish result. You chop it off, you get an awesome result. So I can only say that it must be because the flux path is open that you get that result from the open E structure and not the closed. So the first thing is, if you're gonna use these things, don't give it a closed structure, give it an open structure. Now it only really works well in that orientation. If you try that orientation, again, you get a rubbish result. So it should be oriented like that with that section in the magnets. Now, of course, we've got a number of options when we do that. We can slide it under the wheel so the magnets pass across that way, or can rotate it 90 degrees so they pass across that way. It's best if rotated 90 degrees so the magnets pass across that way. Now, it's probably because of the laminations. I don't know, I'm guessing. But remember, these laminations are here to prevent eddy currents, so it's probably something to do with that. Wild guess don't know, but do know you get a better result if the magnets pass across here than if you have them pass across there. Now when you slide this under the magnets, if the magnets cover a section of it, that's the best result you get. So it makes no difference, given this a four and a half centimeter magnet, if the magnets pass that way, that way, or that way. They're all the same, as long as the magnet passes over the section in its entirety. Now I've got four and a half centimetre magnets and this is clearly more like 50 or 60 centimetres so it's a huge waste of material because the magnets aren't passing across it. But that's just to do with the fact that I bought magnets of one size and I was using these um, microwave oven transformers of another size. But the extra bulk material is essentially wasted and it's the same with the coil. When you put it on the coil goes under only to about that far makes no difference if you put it all under or halfway under. It's just that the magnets need to pass in their entirety over the coil, so the rest of the coil, which isn't under the influence of the magnet, is clearly a waste of coil. Now, options obviously would be get bigger magnets or use smaller coils, one or the other, but I bought the magnets, I have these coils, and so I'm wasting material. If you're going to be looking at doing this kind of thing, then Clearly, the magnets covering the coils are what you want to have, or at least that's what I found by doing this, which I thought was really kind of interesting. Another interesting thing, actually, is the core doesn't have to be inserted all the way. About halfway down will just do fine. So if the thing's inserted that far down, you get the same result as if it's that far down, or if it's at the bottom of the E-shape. Either of those positions actually just works fine, oddly enough, which is kind of cool. Now, when it comes to the choice of the coils, it doesn't actually seem to matter very much. So this is the primary, and out of this, uh, at this speed, which is actually about 10 RPM, 
I would get two volts and round about, actually it's, it's awesome, round about 200 milliamps to about 400 milliwatts at 10 RPM. On this one, I'd get about 20 volts out of it, but at about 20 milliamps, so 400 milliwatts. So more or less, the two coils actually had very little difference at all in their results. And I'm guessing that's because it's the same mass of copper. Again, it's a guess. I'm guessing the same mass of copper in a different arrangement, lots of thin wires, fewer thick wires, gives the same result. It's just that you get a lower voltage, higher ampage with this one. And with the uh, secondary, which is the thin one, you get a higher voltage, lower ampage, but you get the same wattage. So I guess it's just a choice that you want to make, whether you use the primary or the secondary. Do you want 20 volts out of it or do you want 2 volts out of it? Uh, and that would be the choice you make. And it, and it makes sense really because these are obviously thicker wires and there's less of them. So the resistance is lower, ergo the amps is up. But because there's less wires, the volts are down. So it didn't seem to matter much which one I used. It was only a choice of uh, whether I wanted high volts or high amps. And that seemed to be the choice that mattered. Now, they do work actually without a magnetic core at all. Now, with a, mag a magnetic core, so if they're popped back onto this steel, then the minute I put them under load, there's quite a slowing down. This goes from 10 RPM to about 5 RPM, and that is the reactants, obviously. Now, you do get the power out, but obviously what you're doing is giving up the, um, ro the rotation, which means that it needs more energy to put in because you get more energy out. Remember, no free rides. You do get more energy out, but it, you need to put more energy in to maintain the rate of uh, revolutions. With this one, where there is no core, then you don't get such a noticeable slowing down. So when the... Uh, blower is blowing on that and it's going at 10 rpm and I put this on a load it'll maybe drop to about 9 rpm but you get about half the voltage and half the ampage out of this without the iron core so again I think it's just a choice I don't think it matters that much actually if you put an iron core in there or not or at least it seems not to now that makes sense to me actually Iron cores, are, of course, are essential in motors, and we have been using them in generators, and we seem to have this idea that they're essential in generators. What I think, actually, is that they're not, and I think that's going to upset a lot of people because people tell me that they are. But I think, actually, that they do focus the power, if you like. I mean, it's a way of talking about it. They do focus the uh, magnetic flux. They give it a path. The, um, the collapse of the field makes sure that you get a bit more power out but to get that power out you have to put more power in that is you need a higher or stronger wind to get that to work whereas if you don't use those it works in a lower wind but you get of course less power out so again I think it's going to be a choice that you're going to make rather than a dictate that you must have an iron core I think if you have a, an iron or ferrite core, then it will operate in higher wind speeds. If you don't have one, it will operate in lower wind speeds. But equally, lower wind speeds, lower power. So I think it's going to be a choice, really. And of course, that's very unsatisfactory for lots of people. Lots of people just want a, an answer. Use this, do this. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to me like there is that answer. Your choice of wire clearly depends on your voltage and ampage requirements. You want low volts, lots of amps, thick wire. You want lots of volts, low amps, thin wire. You want to operate in low speeds, no iron, you know, low wind speeds, no iron core. You want to operate in high wind speeds, iron core. Or at least that seems to me what the guidance is. Now, Obviously this is in this shape because uh, I pulled it from a microwave oven transformer but it equally doesn't seem to matter that much what shape it actually is. So I just used this which is the wire on a bobbin and I put a bolt through it and got a pretty decent result out of it which I thought was kind of cool actually because a bolt obviously is very tempting. If I put a load of bolts under here and then coils that are the same size as the magnets although it's quite a lot of work to do that it would be fixed, 
uh, I would get a reasonable result out of it and I could put quite a lot of coils around there so that would be kind of interesting too. So that's the result really of my day's work and as I say not particularly satisfying is um, I think I've found a reasonable amount of stuff I've still got to process it I've still got to make some actual decisions about what I'm going to do with this thing because I still haven't decided that so to a degree it's raised more questions than it's provided answers but it has provided some answers and it has been certainly interesting I'm kind of leaning towards thicker wires without a core I'm kind of leaning towards still using the transformers and the secondaries but to remove the primary now I did try the primary and the secondary together on the same core what I found was that um, they actually nullified each other it didn't seem to make much difference whether I connected them uh, clockwise or counterclockwise or in series or in parallel they just seemed to nullify each other whatever I happened to do so when I connected the primary and the secondary the volts on the amps would drop to next to nothing and obviously while I was doing all the cross connections I got an awful lot of shocks so <laughs> I should be more careful I suppose but it seemed that the two coils on the same core didn't work particularly well at all so it's not, that is something that I won't be doing if I do carry on with the microwave oven transformers it will only be one coil I'm quite keen on the high voltage so it's likely to be the um, secondary coils that I use don't know what I'm going to do about this. I've got one more set of tests that I didn't have time to do today because it's actually quite late. And that is to saw this off. So I thought I would saw this off so we just have the internal core and just stick the internal core in there and see what result we get for that internal core. That's the only thing that I want to do now. Uh, and if I get a decent enough result, that's likely to be what I go with. But remember, in, with the magnets passing over that section. Anyway, I thought I would share that day with you. I hope it was of interest and I hope it answered um, people's questions. Of course, this is a discussion video and the whole series actually is a discussion series. And we ha have been chatting about it and obviously I've taken a lot of things on board that people have suggested. So I would really appreciate help in the comments, of course. So uh, if you do want to help, that would be great. I'd look forward to hearing from you. And thank you very much for watching the video.